morning, everybody. It's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and my good friend, Michelle Bauman, the director of Why for Life, is back with us today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for inviting me back. It's great to see you again. We got to hang out at the March for Life. I was just thrilled to be a part of your conference there. Um, and it was just, it was a really, it was a really edifying experience. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to sit down with you again. Yeah, it was wonderful. And thanks so much for being there. We had so many opportunities to talk about life and life issues and participate in the March. Um, it was really an incredible experience. A lot of a lot of young people excited about supporting life. So it's always exciting to be there. Absolutely. Uh, so when we're on, on this side of things, one of the things we've been doing is uh, talking about life in the Ten Commandments. And we've been working through that, that it's it's not just the Fifth Commandment. But today we're going to find out it is also the Fifth Commandment. The yeah. Fifth Commandment, you shall not murder. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, and this is a big one. Normally we, we, we tackle two, um, but this one, this one we should take some time on. So when God says you shall not murder, he really, um, he really is protecting the gift of life, right? So each of the commandments protects a gift that God intends to give, uh, and, and to uphold. And that gift in the fifth commandment is the gift of life. And we know that this is true, not only from life at its very beginning, um, but also all the way to the end of life, to, to natural death. So um, some obvious things come up when we want to apply this to social settings. Obviously, uh, this, this is applied to abortion. It's applied to physician-assisted suicide and euthanasia, which is not legal in America, but is around the world. Um, but it also includes things like suicide in fact, all the sides, patricide and uh, fratricide and, and all of those sorts of things. And um, and we recognize that that um, murder, that the taking of life is um, is has severe consequences. Right. Um, but it, it, it is a, a very serious issue. Um, also, certainly is forgivable. But we see the we see. Um, the effects of that uh, for generations to come. So I think of I think of Genesis four, right, um, with with Cain, where we have the first time when this this command, even though it hasn't been given yet, um, but certainly is inherent. God values life from the very beginning. Um, but when when Cain, through his jealousy, um, commits the act of murder, and um, we see that that Cain. First of all, doesn't um, you know? Doesn't own that act, right? So he tries to hide it, which is is natural to sin. Um, and then we see some some rebellion against what God's desire is, right? Uh, when he's asked where his brother is, "Am I my brother's keeper?" Right? There's there's this rebellion, yeah. this defiance, um, and and the answer, of course, is yes, right? Because um, at the core of of this this commandment is is not only upholding our lives or valuing our own lives, but upholding and even more so the lives of our neighbors, right? Um, and and our brothers and sisters uh, in Christ. And so so yeah, I think um, we see we see this rebellion, we see this defiance, and then Cain, um, when he is confronted by it, right? God still does protect him. He gives this mark of protection, but there are consequences. Um, he is he is cast out. He is sent away, and so then we see this. Not only is he is is he um, mourning the loss or separated from his brother, right? Or will be, but he's also then going to be separated from his family, and this doesn't just affect him. We know that Cain has children. The Bible records it. And so for generations, we have we have a broken family. Cain, not only Cain, but also his descendants, they won't know Adam and Eve. They won't know their grandparents. They won't have the chance to get to know uh, Abel or, or what would have been his descendants. Or maybe he did have some beforehand, right? Um, but, but there's this separation that then happens not only for Cain, but also for the generations to come. Um, and, and so we see that murder is a very, um, a very serious sin, a very serious separation, um, that, that devalues life, but also separates, 
um, those things that should be there to uphold life, like family and community. So, yeah. There, there's something to be said for a fifth commandment that comes out of a fourth commandment, that, that the, the order that God gives to you is, is actually intentional. Like he didn't just sort of like scratch his head and just throw a bunch of rules on the chalkboard, like a fifth grade class trying to figure out how to behave. Uh, he, he's actually sort of sorting through from your family will be life. And that life is, is worth guarding. That life is worth protecting and cherishing. Uh, Luther picks up on it too when he grabs hold of the large catechism. I was thinking about Cain and Abel that, that you were just telling, and the mark that God puts on Cain, the, the world loves to talk about it and all sorts of mysticism, like it's, it's he's a vampire now, um, or, or <laughs> right. things like that. But you're right. This was, this was God offering a gift to protect his life, that the fifth commandment isn't just don't kill. But Luther says that, that we should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. So you have God then drawing Drawing near to a sinner who has taken life, and and there are consequences to that sin. Sin breaks stuff, but even there, God is seeking to see that Cain is his life is is preserved, that that his body is is cared for, that nobody comes and kills him. Right. Yeah. And 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 you see that again and again, right? God does preserve and uphold life, even when we don't. Um. And and that's important to recognize, right? So for for the person who has committed an abortion, right. I mean, let's let's bring it to today or the person who has um, has committed murder or the person who has murdered someone else in their heart. Right. By by saying you fool <laughs> um, by by um, creating by defaming someone. Um, well, or not even necessarily defaming, but just even attacking or speaking ill of that person, even when we don't uphold life. God upholds our lives and teaches us through that upholding how to uphold the lives of others, right? God forgives that sin and then turns around and gives us, gives us what's necessary to uphold our lives so that we might um, then uphold the lives of others. Um, it, it's, it's all connected, right? Um, and it's important to recognize the source. We don't just uphold life. We're not able to in and of ourselves, um, but through God, because of God's work in our lives, we are then able to, to recognize this is my neighbor, hmm. one whom I have been called to love, right, and to uphold. Absolutely. Uh, one of the, the things that, that you've always talked about with me is, is that we, we are gospel motivated when we talk about life and not law motivated. And, and so, you know, obviously just walking through the Ten Commandments, there, there's a tendency to get bogged down, but the, the gift of the law is actually seeing who gives it, that, that God actually is the one who wants to, to do this thing. And that, that's also going to shape the mission in the same way that even as, as Roe v. Wade was, was overturned, our mission isn't done because there, there's still life issues to talk about in the same way. Even if we were to somehow create a, a world where uh, the, the law was so powerful that, that there were no more abortions, no more sides, uh, suicide, or, or no more euthanasia, and any of the ways that, that life issues are affronted, there are still neighbors to care for in their bodies. It, it, it shapes the discussion for us and because it's not just about sort of going out there and, and, and shouting down anybody about to make a bad life choice, but it's even nurturing the ones who have sinned, who, who, who have fallen into this and, and offering them love and, and care as well. Right. With a recognition that, that we too have failed in this commandment. There's not a single commandment that we have not, not broken. And so as, as a fellow sinner, we have compassion for those who have fallen prey to this sin too, um, and and um, have a message of hope for them. We have that gospel of forgiveness and the message that their lives still are very valuable uh, and very much loved by God, um, and 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 there is hope for the future. So. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it gives us something to, to say against one of sort of the more the common accusations uh, uh, against the pro-life crowd. So I'll maybe give you a chance to answer. You only care about mothers uh, until the baby is born. W what do you say to that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK, so so no <laughs> is the obvious answer. But I mean, there's a, a variety of ways that we can we can address this issue. Obviously, you know, we don't want um women, we, we want to encourage women not to have abortions because the long-term effects of abortions are so severe mentally, spiritually, and physically. Uh, abortion is not, uh, is not something that is safe and easy for a woman. It has serious consequences. Um, and, and even, again, those long-term, even if there's not physical consequences, like 
a laceration, like the inability to carry a child in the future, like an increased risk of breast cancer uh, for, for um, abortions or in connection with abortions. But there's also the long-term spiritual and emotional effects. Uh, the the um, increased race rate of the likelihood of suicide. There was a number that was that came out. Um, oh gosh, uh, I did some research a few months ago, but it showed that a woman who has recently had a child. It compared a re woman who's recently had a child to a woman who's had an abortion, and that that woman who's had an abortion is six hundred percent more likely to in, to um, engage in the the well, more likely to commit suicide, more likely to engage in suicidal ideation. There's something very, very serious about that, right? Now, it is true that a woman who has a child is much less likely than the average woman um, to consider suicide. So we're using two extremes, but still the 600% difference, I mean, that's that's a serious difference. So, so, so abortion is not good for women and we love women, right? It's just as much as we love children. Um, but, you know, in, in addition, um, even for those women who have had abortions, the pro-life movement, the for-life movement uh, reaches out to, to share that, that message of forgiveness. You know, at Lutherans for Life, we have um, a branch called Word of Hope, which is a 24-hour crisis hotline for anyone who's going through a life crisis. Sometimes, in fact, very often, those are women or men who are who are dealing with um, the the emotional impact or the spiritual impact of an abortion. And sometimes that is years later, right? Um, and so <clears throat> we know sin sin does have long term effects going right back to, to Cain, right? Long-term effects on his family. We also see generationally then, I mean, generations later, he has a great, 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 I don't know how many greats grandson named Lamech, right? Who not only commits murder, but brags about it, right? Um, and and um, it, to his wife and to his, to his daughter. And so, um, he boasts in it. So we know that this, this, there, there's not just a, a, a corruption, right? Not just a sin to be dealt with, but also um, it, it is, it's, it's transformative. Um, and if we don't deal with it, um, there can be some really um, long-term negative consequences, right? Uh, not only for us, but for how we portray life and uphold life for our children and our children's children, right? Um, my dad used to say, <clears throat> the faith can be lost in one generation. And that's not um, that's not to say that a, a sin can cause one to lose faith. But but when we when we embrace sin, when we embrace the idea that life is not um, sacred, that it has nothing to do with God's handiwork. And when we deny that repeatedly, Right, we we set ourselves up for some very serious, um, not only consequences but also life-altering decisions. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's one of those those balancing acts that we do as a Christian that the world doesn't necessarily get because well, they're they're missing Jesus, um, and, and that's <laughs> that's not an attack, but it, it's a it's a, just a different lens. And so for us, our value comes from that which was paid for us. You are worth the death of God. But when it still comes to, to sin, you're not known by your sin anymore. You're, you're not marked by it forever, but we simply can still ask, is this a good thing or a bad thing? And right. for us, we get to say we, we're sinners. We, we have done bad things and we want to recognize that they're bad because real bad, more bad comes from it. But, but our value is, is continually in the blood, which was shed for us. It's a call back for sinners to actually find a little bit of hope. And so then the, the, the measuring stick is never, are you all right because you have not sinned, but are you all right because Jesus has died for you? But at the same time, the measurement is not, well, if Jesus has died for you, it doesn't matter what you do because look, real bad things are, are happening. Uh, for us, we, we just want to get sinners near to Jesus because that's where there's hope and, and, and that's where that's where there's a path that, that walks that, well, a, a road that, that's a lot less painful. Right. <clears throat> Again, God gave us the commandments not because he wanted us to fail. 
uh, God gave us the commandments because he, he gave us, he wanted to protect things for us, right? Mm-hmm. These gifts that he intends to give. And, and so um, when we, when we uh, uh, try, when we work against the commandments, when we turn away from when, when we say these are no longer, no longer the, the gifts that we intend to get, we, yeah, the path is not so great, right? Um, we experience a lot more. We experience a lot of hardship. We experience a lot of, a lot of loss. Now that doesn't mean that God can't intervene and that he can't bring us back and that he doesn't still want to give us the gifts that he's promised because he does, because our God is merciful and he is loving and he is uh, consistent in the, in those <clears throat> truths and those realities and those gifts. Like that never changes. Um, but it's important to recognize that um, that that the law is a gift and that God does intend to give us yeah. gifts and that we sh- should remain um, in him. Absolutely. Michelle Bauman is the director of Why for Life. Uh, they're doing all sorts of awesome stuff across social media. Michelle, where can we find more of you? Uh, visit us <clears throat> on Instagram. At LFL Y for Life or visit yforlife.org. You can also visit us on TikTok, same handle, LFL Y for Life, Snapchat, and a variety of places. So we hope to see you there. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.